You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic is dental implants, what you need to know. With us we have Dr. Heller and Dr. Versman. Okay, uh, now, by the way, at the break, he says that that little pin, not everybody gets to wear. Oh, you know, I'm very proud of that. That just says ADA. It says ADA. Okay. It stands for the American Dental Association. And both Doug and I have participated and tried to give back to our profession. And I've been the past president of the Colorado Dental Association, okay. but currently I'm on the board of trustees or the board of directors of the American Dental Association, representing seven of our western states and all of the dentists. And the one neat thing about the American Dental Association, Randy, is that it really tries to give back to the public and to protect the public and to make sure that, that our people in this country understand what dentistry has to offer and try to give access to those who are in underserved communities. So it's a real privilege to be Good. able to participate at that level. I'm glad you asked him too, because he wouldn't have mentioned it anyway. Is that right? So a nice. very humble guy. Now, is it true that a lot could go wrong in the hands of an inexperienced dentist because you're professors when it comes to dental implants. Well, I think I think that that's something that patients, I mean any 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 dentist can do a dental implant legally. Is that legally, correct? In legally in our state, any dentist can do anything that any other dentist does. But we do have specialists I mean, you're in different biased. areas of dentistry. You're biased. You think that they should go to a periodontist? Well, we've spent so much of our career learning how to deal with any problems that could occur, how okay. to maximize the aesthetics, how to get the best result you can get. Uh, we're not really beginners in the field. But isn't it more to go to a specialist like you? Absolutely not. It's basically the same. It's I the mean, same. an implant to purchase an implant from an implant company costs the same for all dentists. So, with all things being equal, I guess you know they should. Is that tip number one? Look for a specialist. Well, you know, you're bringing up an issue that's kind of uh, strong in our heart. Is that okay. that implants are real costly, and that's really just not true. You know, these things last for years and years and years, maybe forever. Uh, but it's such a cheap solution. To whatever problem is there, it because you won't get cavities. You don't get. Uh, what if they have bad gums? The neat thing about dental implants. Uh, boy, I'm glad you asked that. You seem to know quite a bit about I'm this, on a roll Randy. Today. I'll Thank tell you. you what, I did a little research about you well, guys. Very good. The neat thing about dental implants: people who've had gum disease, which is our specialty, periodontics, are very, the implants are very resistant to gum disease and bone loss, and that's why the success rate is so terrific. Because once the bone fuses to that implant, it's going to be there for almost every patient for the rest of their so life. So if somebody has bad gums, that does not eliminate them from getting dental implants. Those are great candidates. Really? Absolutely great. Yeah. The only preclusions would be someone who, let's say, he had uncontrolled diabetes, who had some kind of uh, blood disease, but most medical problems are not an obstacle to placing implants. As a matter of fact, those patients benefit tremendously because now they can choose their food, digest their food better, um, eat all kinds of things that they haven't been able to eat. People forget what it was like. Do if, they really? If they've been oh, wearing yeah. dentures, Randy, for a long time, they forget what it was like to chew with their real teeth and to be able to taste the food. Um, How does like it affect taste? To. Well, what we're able to do is we're able to remove the palate from an upper denture because the implants are stabilizing it so well that you don't have to have this metal or plastic covering the roof of the mouth. So that exposes the taste buds, and it just makes a world of difference to people. That's great. So you don't think, now, and we, we talked, you say that they don't know what they're missing, that you wish there was a try-in period for, for denture wares, well, we and they couldn't that. go back. That's right. If, if there was some way we could put implants into a patient's jaw, and let them go out and try it for a week. Do you believe that? I know that. You talk to our patients. Talk to any patient who's had implants. It basically changes their life so much that they would come back and say, okay, finalize it. Or they you, wouldn't come back because they'd be so happy. Now, people are coming from all over the state. They do. To get Randy. dental implants from right. They do. They even come from out of state. And what's uh, really neat about our office location, it's very convenient. It's close to the airport, for that matter. We're right near uh, Interstate 225 and Parker Road. And everybody who lives in the Denver area pretty much knows where that location is. So it's very convenient for people to get to our office. And uh, we are so privileged to have people come from all over to have us help them with their problems. Is it more men or women that are coming in for dental implants? You know, it's probably, it depends on the situation, you know, no one, no one isn't a candidate. So fixed, I mean, that seems like what somebody wants right. the most, something that doesn't come in and out. Right, and if, if, they, if that's their needs and their wants, uh, typically it would be six implants, particularly in the lower arch, and six implants maybe in the upper arch to accomplish that. So it's not, like I said earlier, it's not an implant per tooth. Um, 
It's less so than six that. six implants and they don't have to take something out. Six implants and they do not have to take something out. It's permanent. And boy, do people love that. Now, yeah. you could use your own denture in some cases. Frequently some you cases. can. It just depends on the status of that denture. But you so, like to remake them? or? Well, again, we leave that up to the restorative dentist and the patient to make that decision. What we will always do, Randy, is we will always have the patient consult with their dentist or we will refer them to a dentist before we start. Because if we're going to be a team, we have to communicate as a team with the patient being the leader because the patient okay. is the one who makes the decision as to what they would like to achieve. Now, yeah. you, you call it a team approach. Exactly. Do you work together on cases? Or are you referring team approach actually, with their general Yeah, dentist? we actually have done that as well. So it, it really depends on whatever is needed in those situations. Um, so yeah, we do work together occasionally. It's not typical that Kenny and I would work together. But we consult a lot on cases okay. as to trying to determine what's going to be best. So he and I will share our thoughts with each other um, relative to patient records, sometimes examining the patient together. Usually, the one of us will treat the patient uh, okay. totally from our surgical aspect. Let's take the denture wear for a moment. They go in on a consult. What, are the, what do they want to know? What are their frequently asked questions? Well, number one, does it hurt? Okay. okay, that's very, very common. Number two, what does it cost? Number three, what they can expect afterwards. Do they have to go without teeth? Uh, those are Do all... they have to go without teeth? No, that's the beauty of it. Okay. That's okay. really the beauty of it. Is that... How soon can they eat food? Right away. Yeah. Right away. Now, they're not eating crunchy, hard things. We ask them to use some good judgment. But our rule of thumb is day of surgery, anything they can cut pretty easily with the side of a fork, they can eat. So pastas and meatloaf and casseroles and eggs. How soon before they can eat a steak with the right candidate? Denture wear. You like to eat steak, Randy? Well, you know, sometimes I like a good steak. And so do our patients, you know, and that's the beauty. Usually after about a week and a half to two weeks, you know, they can eat steak. Now, we're not talking about that real tough steak necessarily. It's going to be a good steak. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I recommend the good steak. I recommend the good steak. But right. you know what? Once these people start uh, being able to taste their food and chew it better than they ever have in a long time, these, pa these patients will eat good steak. We're out of time. Now, but you know, a, a few things. You say people go out of their way to keep it a secret oftentimes that they are wearing dentures. Oh, most people do, Randy. Most people aren't going to reveal to someone else that even their spouses and their children, they're not going to reveal to other people that they're wearing dentures. But can you imagine being out? See, you have all your teeth. You have yeah. a beautiful smile, Randy. Thank you. you can't relate. It's even hard for us, other than for patients who tell us their stories. They're out to dinner. Something gets a seed or something gets caught under their denture. It's very painful. They can't take it out at the table. They may be able to excuse themselves and go to the, to the restroom and take it out and rinse it out, but then they have to do that when some other people may be around. It is very embarrassing for these people. Think about the spouse or someone who's in a dating relationship, and they have to take their teeth out at night and put them in a glass. Randy, that is very okay. emotionally difficult. Yeah. So. So to be able to help those people, it is just wonderful, and they are forever grateful. Well, everybody, I think, is afraid of losing their teeth. I mean, I've had a few dreams about that. Absolutely. I mean, that your teeth fall out. Absolutely. But those who've already lost them, they've gone through that fear, and now they keep trying to adjust. Because as I mentioned, once the teeth come out, the bone continues to shrink. And if that bone continues to shrink, the dentures get loose, and they start to flop around. So public speaking. Being in social settings, it can be very embarrassing. Because people are and dating it, today. I mean, 60 it, is young. Right, and it doesn't have to be lose all your teeth. It could be some of your teeth, one of your teeth. You know, it because it, you see people who smile nowadays and they're taking their family photos and real tight lip. They don't show any teeth, don't want to, uh, because they're embarrassed. You say guys grow big, giant mustaches to hide. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They do yeah. that, or people will speak with their hand over their mouth. They're afraid that their teeth may get loose, or they're afraid of odors that come from underneath the prosthesis. So socially, it can be very embarrassing and intimidating Is this to the people. future of dentistry? I mean, someday... Well, the, the beauty, future, the beauty is good. the future is here. Yeah, it's there the future now. is right now. This is, this is the future for many, many years to come, and implants have been perfected. Are there misconceptions about dental implants that you hear as dentists that just go, boy, that's not true? Every once yeah. in a while, we'll have a patient come in who says, well, my neighbor had an implant and had a terrible time with it, and we just scratch our heads. It just doesn't seem to happen if you treat the tissues right, treat the patient right. 
people do not have terrible difficulty with these. You know, I've asked so many of my patients how they liked it afterwards. All, just about all of them, just about all of them say one of two things. Either they don't even know it's there or they can't tell the difference between their natural teeth. That's okay. pretty powerful. We're out of time. Somebody watching this, they have a denture or they're missing teeth. What do you say to them and how do they get started? Well, the first thing they could do is talk to their general dentist. Okay. Uh, if they don't have a general dentist, we would certainly be happy to talk to them. Uh, but the reality is, is they just got to go and ask and find out. You know, if you look on the internet today, you can't find um, a paucity of, of articles on dental implants. I mean, it's all over the place. We welcome them to go to our, our internet site, periodontalhealth.com, and there's a lot of information on implants there. But we invite these people to even just call our office for information before they even come in, if they have some concerns about making that first visit, we invite them to call so that we can give them some information and hopefully guide them in the right direction. All right, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show, Dr. Heller, Dr. Versman. Great stuff. Very interesting. Thanks thank you. It was a program. real honor to be yeah. with you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been Andy. watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health.